This is Junk Dump, and today we're going to talk about hydraulic lifters. I'm going to explain how they work, and then we're going to finish off in the garage with a teardown and a rebuild. So why hydraulic valve lifters? Well, mainly because there's no valve lash adjustments. That means no hot valve lash, no cold valve lash. You don't have to worry about the inconsistencies between the two. And the biggest advantage that they have is consistent valve lash regardless of the engine temperatures, the oil viscosity, the oil temperature, and valve train component deviations. Now let's do a true or false segment with some of the things I hear most about valve lifters. So here's the first statement I hear a lot is that hydraulic lifters suffer from pump up. And that statement is just going to be false across the board. First off, you would need to get the internal pressure in your lifters over 150 PSI um, in order for that to over pump your lifters and keep your valves open. Secondly, when people are talking about pump up, they, they're typically referring to a problem that stems from in, inefficient spring loads. And that's gonna create a lack of contact between the valve train components. And lastly, bent components can cause the ball check to open and to over pump the lifters, giving you that actual pump up. And the next statement that I hear all the time is hydraulic lifters make less power. And that statement is true under very specific circumstances. Hydraulic lifters weigh more than solid lifters. So solid lifters, you can use lighter springs and then you get the advantage of a lighter valve train. So in a 500 plus horsepower engine build where you've upgraded to solid lifters and changed out to lighter springs, you will see up to a 0.8% torque and 1.8% horsepower gain. So in that case, you would see about uh, somewhere around three and a half torque and around nine horsepower. So in an all out race application, sure, it makes more sense to go to solid lifters and just make sure that you're changing, checking your lash and adjusting your lash periodically. Um, on the street or in performance applications, I still tend to stick to hydraulic lifters. So now that we know all this about lifters, what is important when you're choosing a lifter? And, and the one thing, the two things that make the most impact are gonna be bleed down rate and oil viscosity. The bleed down rate in a lifter, um, if it's a faster bleed down rate, it increases the stiffness and the adjustment speed that the lifter is gonna be capable of. And you may not be thinking of it this way, but oil viscosity makes a huge impact because of uh, buildup from poor quality oils um, and higher viscosities will make your lifters react much more sluggishly and slowly. For oils, I use Castrol GTX for non-synthetic and Castrol Edge for synthetic applications. And I tend to stick around a 1030 viscosity, but again, it, it's gonna change depending on the tolerances in your engine and such. And in engines that I've worked on, um, those Castrol engines tend to be the cleanest and the best protected over their lives uh, versus other oils on the market, especially the cheaper ones. Now let's look at the hydraulic lifter parts, starting from right to left, the retainer ring, the push rod seat, the oil metering valve, the plunger, the check ball, the ball check spring, the ball check retainer, plunger spring, and all of that fits into the lifter body. Here's a cutaway with the lifter installed and you can see the push rod at the top, the plungers, the lifter body, the ball check spring, the plunger return spring, and the ball checks and their positions dependent on the cam. Here's how the oiling works. The oil feeds through the gallery into the main plunger and then it's free to move up the push rod and down into the ball check location, which will become the high pressure area once the lifter hits the load. With the lifter actuated and on the load, you still have oil moving from the oil gallery into the plunger. However, the ball check closes and you get a high pressure area that can't be compressed underneath the plunger. And that's what makes the lifter body and the plunger move together as a solid unit. So in this case, it's starting to act exactly as a solid lifter would. Now I'll elaborate more on the lifter at rest. When the ball check is open, that's gonna allow the oil to move freely through the bottom. And it also allows the plunger to move independently, which is in green, of the lifter body, which is in red here. And that's gonna remove any valve lash in the valve train. So when the lifter is actuated, the, the ball check at the bottom closes, which forces the plunger and the lifter body, both outlined in green here, and they'll move together as a solid unit, just like a solid lifter. 
you can see there's no movement under where the plunger return spring is, where I've labeled it red. So all of that is moving in the direction of that arrow. Now we'll get out in the garage and let's take a look at stock hydraulic lifters and some aftermarket hydraulic lifters. To start, you'll have to remove that retainer ring. And then with a magnet, you can easily remove the push rod seat. Next to this disc is the oil metering valve. Now I use a pick to hook that oiling hole that's in the plunger and remove that whole assembly. I'm going to set aside the lifter body and concentrate on the plunger assembly. Start with removing the plunger spring. And the check ball retainer is just an interference fit, so you gently pry loose that unit. Now you can set aside the plunger. Remove the ball check and the ball check spring. And that leaves you with the ball check retainer. If you're going to reuse your camshaft and lifters, you would want to soak these in simple green overnight to remove any buildup, and then clean and oil the parts before you assemble them again. Let's start reassembly by placing the ball check spring in the ball check retainer. Now add the ball check to the top of the spring. Install the ball check retainer assembly on the plunger. I start by pressing it into place with my thumb and then using a small screwdriver to gently press it into place. Now you can install the plunger spring on the bottom. That plunger assembly fits into the lifter body. Place the oil metering valve in the top of the plunger. And top it off with the push rod seat on top. Now finally install the retaining ring. And that's it for the stock hydraulic valve lifter. Now some people like to soak these and in some cases they like to bleed them before installation. You can do either way, I've had success using both methods. And now let's take a look at an aftermarket hydraulic lifter. You'll notice that there are some improvements over the stock lifters. Start by removing the retainer clip, and this can be tricky in some cases because some of the lifters use a snap ring that's actually still a little too big to fit inside, so you can't just squeeze it and pull it out. Um, it's a little tricky.
Now your magnet will pull out that push rod seat just fine. And you'll notice your first difference here when you're removing the oil metering valve. You'll notice that it's a different design. And again, you can use a pick to hook the oiling hole and remove the plunger assembly. I'll set aside the lifter body. Now remove the plunger spring. And this lifter uses a check valve rather than a ball check, and you can gently pry loose the check valve retainer. Set aside the plunger. Now you're free to remove the check valve and the check valve spring. Finally, you can place down the check valve retainer. Again, after inspection, soak them in simple green overnight, then clean and oil the parts, and it should be ready to go. I start reassembly by placing the check valve spring in the check valve retainer. Then you can install the check valve. Now install the check valve retainer assembly on the plunger, in this case I use my thumb, and then I'll use a screwdriver to walk around the edge to make sure that it's seated fully. Now you can install the plunger spring, insert the plunger into the lifter body, and install that oil metering valve. Now place the push rod seat on top. And finally install that retaining ring. And that's it for an aftermarket hydraulic valve lifter. Now in this case again, you can soak them in oil and then choose whether or not to bleed them. And this is Junk Dump and that was Hydraulic Lifters. I hope you enjoyed our teardown, our rebuild, and some of the information that I provided here. And again, I want to thank you all for watching.